Untucked really sent me for a loop there. Yeah. I like had my angle ready to come in here, and then it was like, can't do it now. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 14, Episode 7. Uh, I don't find... I can't see a name yet. The Chaps. Minship. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> not even a pun. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just doesn't have a name yet. I'm not sure. Oh, boy. This is a group of girls. <laughs> the thing is, honestly... In, like, a rare first, I feel like I actually like all of them. I do mostly like all of them. There's there's a, a, a note here or a thing there, yeah. and they each have their own little irritating quirks or whatnot. But I think in a general sense, they are all... I, I think it's, it's also some of the coming out of the pandemic and stuff. Like, I oh, think... Oh, yeah. I think that there's sort of, like, a... a there's a collective something happening with mm -hmm. this group of girls i'm not entirely sure but we were talking we we watched untucked so I, I, i'll start there it got really emotional jasmine is jasmine's young i yeah. mean i think that the lot of my because i actually like jasmine she was one of the first ones that i noted i think that her looks have been inconsistent but yeah. i think that speaks more from experience and less from actual talent or prowess yeah or... i don't think she's bad no I just, like, no I, like the chaps tonight were a little ill-fitting but the look overall was nice yeah uh as as nice as chaps can be <laughs> well she just kind of like somebody said in an earlier episode uh, yeah episode where they were like she just quite hasn't learned yeah the like what to say because she she gets she has a little bit too much fun piling on yeah and that's a little bit like it, it triggers me. But. Yeah, well, because like everybody else is like doing, you know, like ooh, gentle ribbing, and then it's like the vibe that she comes in with is like, and then you should kill yourself. And but, you're like, ah! well, it's just very accurate. It's yeah. like they'll be like, oh, you're so ugly. It's like, and remember that time that you lost, and and it's like, oh, that <laughs> that really... man has feminine hips. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, it gives me Utica from yeah, last yeah, season yeah. where Utica oh, didn't God. quite understand. Remember, Utica yes. didn't understand how to rib people. Oh my God, yes, I do. <laughs> It was like, you're ugly and your teeth are bad. It's like, whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the main thing was, was that I don't think we mentioned it on the show, but a week or two ago, Bosco came out as trans in a, did you know that? No, like outside the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. She like released on social media. Oh, okay. In a very funny way. <laughs> uh, she posted the picture, gorgeous picture of herself. And it just said, I'm straight too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, I do remember that. I now. like that that's, that's one of the takeaways. And so that's what, okay, because it was a very, very deeply yeah. emotional untucked, but I kind of kept smirking and you <laughs> were like, I'm glad you're laughing too. And I'm like, I'm not laughing not at laughing, them. Just but like it you was rem a smile on your face. It was reminding me of the acting challenge oh, where they okay. were doing the I'm straight. <laughs> yeah. And the diet does, I'm straight too. And then they all just kind of kept coming out. Well, because what I said was it was giving me very, I, I am a survivor and I have notes <laughs> from Pitch Perfect. It was, again, very emotional, very sweet. I'm glad that they were all comfortable enough. It was really, really nice. But that is one of the things that was painful. well. Something noteworthy for me is that it's like the we're we're at varying stages of because also that's three now from this season because cornbread was doing hormones mm -hmm. too. Wow, we're at varying stages of public understanding and acceptance yeah. of all things LGBTQ, mm -hmm. and one of the things that's been more um, one of the things that's been sort of hit, coming out in the zeitgeist is what it means to be transgender or non-binary or, or and yada yada. And there was something really, really uh, intimate in a positive way about, I don't think I've ever seen this stage of the transition, mm. the the beginning or even the the question of whether yeah. or not, because it's presented very black and white. It and was it's like a deja Deja was like, has anybody ever thought about transitioning? To which Bosco was like, yeah. yes. And again, we knew that because we had the heads up, but we didn't have a heads up from Jasmine. Yeah. And so, like I said, and especially for reality TV, there was something really intimate about seeing this part of the conversation. Yeah. Because it's like a lot of times it's very black and white in that people and transgender people uh, 
under like they have known their whole life and it's like usually speaking as a gay man uh usually you're aware something yeah is at play it doesn't mean you have a concrete understanding it doesn't mean that it like for every trans person is like i'm a blank and a blank right. you know yeah, yeah, yeah i'm an insert here and that and so to have it be it was it was very noteworthy it was very interesting yeah. i want to hoist all of the grand dame uh status and accolade on carrie because she's doing wonders on the show mm -hmm. and for, for people on the show let alone the people watching it well also t.s madison i don't i love yeah that i live in a world with t.s madison <laughs> i still don't know who or what she is yeah but i love it i have loved everything that i have ever seen her do like every time i see her i'm sort of like Where'd yeah, you, where'd you come from? No, I think because remember she was she was the one that was in Zola, right? Or was she in Hustlers? Zola. She was in one of those mm -hmm. two movies. I don't know. There's just something about there there there's such wisdom and she gravitas and gravitas coming from someone that is also somehow kind of a Looney Tune. Yeah. I don't know. It's I I I love everything. I love everything about it. She's great. So. That was the bulk of the, that was the emotional bulk of yeah. the un Untucked. We're still having issues. So, <sighs> okay. She's, so, it, Diabetti. She just still is very Jan energy. She's doing too much. And there was a question, I think it was from Jasmine. I'm not sure. Because this is the part, I think, where Jasmine's young. But Jasmine was questioning her motives for apologizing mm. to Georges. Mm. And I'm inclined, certainly at this point, to give her the benefit of the doubt. And, and what I'm getting from Diabetti is she just feels her emotions strongly. Well, speaking of Mean Girls, which book ended this episode of <laughs> a Drag Race, I just have a lot of feelings. No, I think she feels very strongly. And I think I think she's a very hard on her sleeve type of, yeah. of person. I also, and I agree her that I I think I said it last week I don't really think Georges deserved to win it wasn't very inspired it wasn't like a lot I do too but I'm not going to take that to the person it's the issue yeah, that I always have with yes. where people are like if you got a problem with me say it to my face and then somebody comes and does that and yeah. that same person will be like who, who the hell are you where did you come from like, yeah. it's like you don't actually want that from people yeah. but I don't know I, I like I said I she, she she did sort of walk back some of her um frustration she did uh, apologize for hurting georgia's feelings because yeah. she didn't she didn't take it back she just was like i'm sorry that i came well, at she, you that way yeah she didn't take it back and then also she was like i'm really sorry but i just don't think it was right i don't know it there, was like no, but there is there is something it's sort of a touche for me about the well yeah i said it and i'll yeah. say it again too and oh she will for sure so uh, I'm trying to think if there was any other actual, like, interpersonal drama. I also will say about Diabetti, though, is, like, I was not a huge fan of last week's look. I appreciate the construction that went into it and that there was a lot of work that went into it. But I think she did way better mm -hmm. this week. This outfit was way That's better. always a factor, and that's the part of art, of all art, but drag that's subjective, is sometimes it comes down to, I just think that's ugly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, yeah. it... it it's one person from from one to the other. They did an acting challenge. <sighs> I liked the acting challenge. I liked it until because uh, frankly, I thought that they all were good. It was I thought it was funny until we got it. Yeah. So there was a there was a so, 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 so unnecessary and even more unfunny layer to it. And it was Daytona wins, which for starters, a. 80s soap opera about the upper crust of Daytona, solid enough. Totally. No cherry needs to be put on that yeah. Sunday. Second of all, there's no, the wind, the, the joke of the farting, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't relate. Yeah. It wasn't even like a, I started to say Idaho, but I was like, I, potatoes don't make you fart. I can't even <laughs> think of like, like if they were working at like a bean factory or something, sure. it's like, though that's low hanging fruit. Yeah. It at least it makes sense. It, or, There's a cause and effect. It. Yeah. There wasn't, there was no like, reason why they were all farting. Sure. Like, you know, whatever at the flag factory, you know. But, that, but that's what I mean. Like if this town, like if they were like the yeah. barons of like the, the bean factory or something, I don't yeah. know. It, that would, 
that would make sense. And it's like, and it it was overplayed. So like, I think there was like 57 fart jokes. Well, because that's the, well, it also wasn't even like they, they didn't, they they didn't all 100% read as fart jokes until the fart was there. It, it felt weirdly mean in that regard because yeah, the I queens all did really good work. And did. it just, first of all, they okay. looked great. What? That is my theory, is that Rue ruined it because she knew they were all going to be you safe. You might be on to something. <laughs> Rue was like, you're all going to be safe anyways. I'm going to ruin your hard work. Because and especially like and and to have it start with Deja, it was it yeah it was real mean. I yeah. was like like it was like she was uh, not in on the joke and right then, because she prefaces the whole thing, but like what prefaces watching the video by saying it just felt like it was missing something, and you very optimistically were like, <laughs> "Ooh, Raja, Raja and Eureka are Eureka gonna be in it. Are gonna be in it because they're." <laughs> Portraits are in there. I had my pennants. I was like, yay! <laughs> All star six. And then <laughs> no, it was just nonstop fart jokes. A couple of like Lady Camden and Bosco were like beside themselves laughing on the runway. But like to me, it was just you You don't have you don't have the you can't say yeah. no in that. Of course position. you can't say no, but like, okay, so the, it's multi-layered for me because in the first place, you are correct. The the premise is solid enough without anything. Shockingly, it was one of the most like effective scripts and coherent, yeah, and coherent scripts that th these acting challenges have ever had. On top of that, everybody did excellent. Everybody work. looked amazing. Everybody translated and transcended the material, and all in slightly different ways. Yeah, and it just it just so completely undercut the entire, and it made them all look stupid. Yeah. And it's like, they're not in a position, I mean, we'll wait until the season's over and the NDAs or all that. Yeah. I mean, those don't expire, but you know what I mean. We'll wait until their obligations have been fulfilled and yeah. see what they think. But I think it made them look foolish in a way that I would be pissed about. I, well, I mean, it honestly, <laughs> Not actually pissed, but. The, like, it made the show look foolish mm -hmm. because like as much as this is yes men dressing up as women and like walking down a catwalk it also this is an art form and you are I don't know. well also didn't they send like didn't they send rock'em sakura home two seasons ago for fart jokes and something and i think Ooh, i don't remember maybe i think she she pulled like a potty humor thing and they were like mm. i don't know it, 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 I'm not one of these people who's trying to come down and gotcha, you know, RuPaul or the show or all that. It's a reality TV show. They're going to do what they got to do. There's going to be lame stuff. There's going to be good stuff, whatever. I just, I think for me, the take, if it were bad and then there were fart jokes would be one thing. But I sure. think the fact that the farting actively ruined it yeah. is where I was so frustrated. I'm also, I'm a fan of a good fart joke. A good, good toilet humor is funny. I think that scene in Bridesmaids is epically <laughs> hilarious. I mean, there are good fart and poop jokes and this just was. Well, like I said, that's what, that's what I mean. I was like, the, nothing about it was, was earned it, yeah. it's not even like because sometimes you'll be driving through the middle of nowhere and you'll be like why does this county smell like farts yeah. like it wasn't even that it's kind also, of thing so Daytona doesn't even smell like farts like it's an hour away from here I, if, if you had to list 25 things Daytona is known for that's or not smells like <laughs> so anyways the people that did the, the Georges was phenomenal in the acting challenge there, there is a reason why it's important to watch telenovelas. There was an extended reel of RuPaul just giving her prompts. Yeah. And she was able to change her face yeah. with each one. It and it reminded me of Eva Longoria's telenovela show. Yeah. Which we funny. actually thought was really good and only lasted one season. Cause even the people who were bad, because it was like Deja was having a hard time a little bit. Angeria was really struggling. Time. And I don't know where it came from. Well, I don't know. But it ended up cutting together really well. So it's sort of it's sort of whatever. At that well, point. and it's like because that's the one where Jasmine where because she's gotten compared to Alyssa Edwards a lot. And she really she looked like she was an Alyssa Edwards drag. And Michelle said it. And I think it 
I agree where it was like it was so bad. Yeah. That it was oh, inspired. Oh, it was Bosco. Bosco was, was Bosco. like, Jasmine's acting is so bad that it's come back around the other side and it's great. <laughs> it was, th- there was just so many choices. Yeah. And like, I was really worried that Daya was going to, because she was overthinking everything. And and I, I, I feel like, because I also don't compete in competitions hardly at all myself because I am too competitive. Mm -hmm. It brings out the worst of me. But one of the things that I've learned about it is it's like very rarely can you be trying to win. It's like you have to be doing something good to the best of your ability. And if the stars align, you win Mm -hmm. like you, you, it's really difficult to go in and be like in with a group of people and be like, I'm going to be the best at this challenge. Yeah, you can't, you really can't like organize a win in and something like this. And she kind of did. She got she, real close. She pulled through. She, <laughs> she did. I mean, the fact that she and Willow d- both decided to be those sisters because, well, so Willow wanted the one sister first and then Diabetti was like, I think it would be hilarious if it was like one tiny little sister and one huge, ridiculous sister. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they ended up doing. And it worked great. And the fact that they were both like different brands of idiot, like Southern idiot was really great. And I think I want to go back to Jasmine for a minute, because the thing I liked the best about her performance is that she was not doing a Southern accent. And at the same time, somehow happened to hit every single Southern accent. (laughs) It was like every syllable was a different region. It was like an entire acting. <laughs> it was like an entire acting challenge where everybody was pronouncing it flag factory. <laughs> like every single person yeah. was doing that. Yeah. And it wasn't just one standout. Who was that? Because, was that Simone? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cause it was fla- uh, God hates flags. Yeah. <laughs> Our current, a reigning queen. <laughs> oh man. It was so good. Yeah, I was like, right? She was quick. Yeah, Simone one. We've um, watched too much Drag Race in the last two and a half years. Because uh, we also had both Lady Camden and Bosco turning in career-defining performances. Yeah. I love that Lady Camden, this is, if you if you have ever needed proof of your street cred for gayness or being, yeah, my? you. Okay. If you've ever needed something to point back to, to be like, this is my this is my proof that I am like allowed to do this, that I'm like, what what am I trying to say? Qualified. Okay. This is why I'm qualified to do this is the, the absolute heart bond you had with Reba McIntyre's fancy (laughs) at like age 10, because it's come up so many times. I love the song fancy. (laughs) That was so long winded on my part, but do you know what I mean? I know you mean. I was like two when when I first heard Fancy for the first time. I was but too, it spoke to you too young to know anything about it. But it was like it was back when country songs. To, I guess they still kind of do, but it was back when country songs told a real good story. <laughs> and it just like for my whole life, I, it's just been stuck in my head forever. You just it, it, yeah, and I think I think whatever whatever the DNA of drag and yeah. the DNA of Fancy are sure. one and the same. Sure. And so anyways, uh, Lady Camden was playing fancy. And yeah. <laughs> she looked like when she came in. <laughs> it was so good. And then again, at Bosco, it yeah. was like she came in and really nailed up to including took the hat off again after yeah. being instructed not to. And Rue allowed it to stay because it worked. Well, but, but she didn't take it off first. She did the thing mm. where she like lifted up and then she took it off. And she it was, was giving. Like, it was different. She was giving Swoozy Kurtz. <gasps> it was real big Swo- Swoozy from. Oh God, there was a show back in the day called Sisters with Swoozy, and I want to say like Celia Ward. <laughs> um, my mom used to watch that show, and so I caught glimpses of it. And Swoozy was in that, and it, it felt real like that. And also, one of the um, Sugar Baker Sisters <laughs> from Designing Women. <laughs> we need to watch because you weirdly never saw the episode of SNL that Drew or uh, RuPaul hosted. And they do mm. RuPaul and Cecily Strong do uh, the Designing night, the women. lights. Went. Well, it's not. Oh. It's not Designing Women. They're just like two ladies in a restaurant that keep. But it's the night the lights went down. It's like that that energy. Nice. So I, I, I feel like I feel like you need to have seen sure. that. Yeah, sure. I think maybe they're trying to one up each other too. I can't quite remember. Uh, okay. But so it brings that brings us to the challenge, the runway or the the runway. Which was chaps, mm-hmm. which I know what you're thinking. You're like, 
that's a really odd specific runway. It they was it, somehow though. one of the most versatile runways. Okay. Like nobody did the same thing. Nobody did the same thing. Like not even like that yellow one from last season where it was like three of them were cabs. <laughs> and I just was like, I mean, okay, I guess. But it was it was really, you're right, versatile. Nobody wore the same color as anybody else. It was and really also, good. Nobody really looked bad. Nobody looked bad. Because this is where, so we'll, we'll do what we've been doing where we'll watch it and we'll talk on each girl. But I will say this. it's So if I have a weak link for me, it's Deja Sky. Yeah. And it's not because I think she's bad. Her sensibilities just aren't resonating with me. Me too. Um. It's just because even her makeup watching Untucked, I was like, her makeup looks good. It just I didn't. It, it, it's it's not my favorite makeup. I think she's still going too too pale and highlighted in the very center. I liked that very first thing she wore, the black lace yeah. with the blue. And then kind of after kind that, of I like, haven't really. Yeah. So that's sort of my only kind of. She right now is is the only one that. Like, I, if she doesn't go home next week, I'll be shocked. Kind of a thing. Like, if it's anybody else. That's a way to, wor- to word it. <laughs> if it's anybody else, I'll be shocked. She just hasn't been yeah. pulling it out, in my opinion. I, I love this. I genuinely couldn't. I couldn't create this. I like, I still like how weird Willow is. It's so weird. And it's, it's not. It's wearing on me a little bit. But if she weren't pulling it off so well, it would be annoying me. Meaning you want like a, a just a solid glamour look? I would love her to just be pretty one week. Okay. Yeah. There's just. There's, just once. Just once and then go back to I think that that's, I think that yeah. that's fair. Uh, I still love it. I There's. There are. This is. Because we've talked a lot about. First of all, I said everything in the kitchen sink like five times. We've invoked uh, Coco Chanel like mm-hmm. five times on the season. This is like seven things too many and somehow it still works. But it's not though because it's a whole concept. Yeah, but it's like the, po- the so the ponytails would be one thing. Yeah. But then there are handlebars, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. But then there's hands holding them, that's another thing. But then that's a kickstand going up her ass, that's another thing. There is so yeah, many, but but you're like, point. I said what I said. It's a whole concept and that's Acid my point. green sunglasses. Whereas the thing that Jasmine wore last week that they dinged her on, that was not a whole concept. That was like a flowy thing. Okay, I understand. With two big earrings and too big a hat. This is a whole concept. I get it. Also, I mean, yeah. she's not wearing tights. No, that's just ass. <sighs> Yeah. Well, in front. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> She's so that cute. Is a, that is a little boy butt, though. <laughs> she also does this thing. I, I'll, I'll invoke uh, the name of my favorite, Kylie Minogue. She does this thing that I think Kylie is really good at, where it's like she can do something really, really smutty mm-hmm. and not have it feel trashy. It does not feel trashy. It's still cute, yeah. even though it, this is like so slutty. <laughs> I think it's because Willow is cute. cute. Willow's just a little cutie. I like this a lot. Um, I think it's one of the more obvious. It's one of the more standard interpretations, Mm -hmm. but done beautifully. Yeah. Uh, Because I said it was giving me Britney and uh, Rachel said Christina. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely because I mean, Christina Aguilera wore chaps for like two years straight. The reason I said Britney is she wears pink chaps like this in the overprotected music video Mm. that it kind of reminded me of. It's like honestly a little bit of share too with the hair. Yeah, there was share in this runway. Definitely. I like but. Bosco. I think I think we need like, although there is, I see the fold in her wig. Mm. Oh, <laughs> there's like a kink. Um, I am. I want Bosco to like. Oh, I know. I guess Bosco won a couple weeks ago, but it was when when I didn't think she should have for the rain cloud into the sunshine dress. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's whatever. I th- I would like Bosco to elevate like one more level. Uh, I think she's. I think she's gonna. I think she's there. Yeah. Uh, I also like the instinct for the baby pink. Yes. I yeah. think that that really makes it not the same old thing. Deja, here we are. It just doesn't. I think the fabric looks cheap. Yeah. And the glittery. Don't. It looks clown. Like she looks like a clown. It will. And the orange hair doesn't help. I also I don't love animal print to start with. And I especially don't like colorful animal print. So like not one ounce of this was working for me. And then the like orange wig with that blue just made me think of I know high she's school. the I know she <laughs> I know she's Jasmine Kennedy was repping high school apparently yeah. Deja was representing our high our school our high school uh I know she introduced herself as the pastel queen 
but I just, the, I don't, I'm not loving. This also is not pastel. Yeah, but it's like bright colored. Like it's like not a natural hair. Okay. What the actual fuck? This fucking bitch. Carrie Colby. So this was my number one. Oh my God. At this point. Yeah. It gets trumped. But at this point, this now, this is Christina Aguilera. The, I mean, also Beyonce. Uh huh. These braids. Unbelievable. The hair. I, I. Because it's like a full hair outfit. I, unbelievable. And okay, this is the kind of shit where like they keep on telling Carrie she's being too beautiful. You're being too she's beautiful. She's relying on pretty. Yeah. Okay. She is obviously still unbelievably stunning. You can't hide that face. It's there, whatever. But this is such a fucking weird thing. To <laughs> do. It's so weird. It was like, remember the VMAs where Molly Sims wore that like horse hair dress? Yeah. That that's uh-huh. that's all I could think of. And it's so cool. It's so weird. It's so interesting. I'm just 100 percent across the board. I loved this. Mm-hmm. It, like I said, up until a certain point, this was my yeah. top. This was absolutely my top. Yeah. This was good. It was good. It's nowhere near the top for me. It's not my favorite. Yeah. I accept that as chaps. I, I Somebody kind of questioned it and they like will allow it. I allow it. It yeah. is very, it feels very, <laughs> it feels very Selena to me. I know she sure. never wore this, yeah. but the showgirl bra, because yeah. everyone remembers from the Selena movie, the bustier yeah. conversation. And um, no, it's very showgirl. It's very Texas. It's very... I, it's very Texas. And she said she was like, it's, I'm just I have my hair like I saw my Tia wearing her hair all the time. And I was like, well, I thought she said something Ooh. that it was my Tia's hair. Like she stole her wig. Oh, God, I thought I that's what she I said. I hope not. That's so crazy. Like, no, I think in the character. Like, yeah, okay, I don't think okay. Georgia's actually stole it. Oh, oh, OK, OK, OK. I thought it was part of the fantasy. Could you imagine? She's like, OK, auntie, I'm going <laughs> to drag race. Give me your wig. <laughs> This is safe yeah, for it Angeria. Was, it was good, too. It's I, it's, it's safe. Yeah. It is, again, towards the bottom. It does kind of look a little I sheepish also, to me. I also think she needs more volume in her hair. Mm, I like. I really like the share, the Casey Musgraves. Okay, the... in general, yes, I like it. But I think for her head shape, she mm. needs more volume in her hair. But but I adore yeah. uh, Angeria. So, um, I mean, I... I would never deign to put her in the bottom. No, no. I was okay with this. Were you hating it or Rachel was hating it? I don't hate it. I don't think the chaps fit properly. I get that. Yeah. The and also the breast fucking breastplate. Breast You're right. I'm sick of it. I, apparently me and Bob the drag queen are <laughs> <laughs> simpatico on all of this stuff because we are having the same complaints. And it was a fit issue last week with Jasmine too. The crotch of that thing was bad. Bad news. Uh, but I like the gimmick. I, I am, fine, yeah. Graduation day, the the puffy sleeves. I, uh-huh. I'm, I'm into it, and I like that it's glittery. That the legs are glittery. Yeah, I, I thought it was fine. I thought it was yeah. it was it was solid. I thought it was safe. Yeah. Bitch. <sighs> Bitch. Okay. For starters. For starters. <laughs> it hurts my feelings, even though I know it was on. Purpose. This is dynamite. <laughs> that is so dynamite. If if I have a critique, it's almost that it happened too soon. Yeah. We didn't get enough time with this initial look. Yeah. So she's has a mustache in, in her, her hand, hands. but then the mustache has a mustache? I think it was just um I, I think it might have been makeup. Yeah, like on lined. The mustache, yeah. Cause that 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 blew my mind. Yeah. I, Either I, that or she just like make up to the mustache to make it darker or something yeah. and it spread onto her face. I just, I I think in our first episode, I was like, there's something about Lady Camden yeah. that I just couldn't put my finger on, and this is fucking it. Because- She also stayed down for so long that I thought we were going to have a bloody nose situation. I, I fell for it. Yeah. I 100% fell for Hook, it. Hook, line, and sinker. Because the first thing, the first thing I was trying to remember is I was like, people have fallen. I mean, no one face planted like yeah. that, but people have slipped. And I was trying to remember how the production treated it. Yeah. Because I was sort of like, would they keep it in if Ruth she had Hall hurt? was like, oh, my God. If she had hurt herself. And yeah. that's what I was bracing for was I was like. Like an injury, like a yeah. serious injury. And I injury. was like, is this how they would be doing it? And, and also, it's the kind of thing because it's like we love and, and especially drag loves a reveal. But there are reveals that are unwarranted or yeah. there are reveals that aren't called for. Not and this it's like, one. And I, I will say it was a risk. There's a chance yeah. they wouldn't have liked that, appreciated yeah. that fake out. We all screamed. All, mm-hmm. Scared the cat to death. That was such a realistic trip, too. So real. And her, like, yeah, her. 
Uh, boom. I, uh, <laughs> well, and on top of that, he's so hot. Such a he swagger. He looks so hot yeah, here. So much swagger. I just, uh this, this, I, like I said, I've liked him the whole time, but yeah. this is some real big front runner. I'm so into Lady Camden now. So that's the thing is like now at this point in the competition, Lady Camden has eclipsed Willow Pill for me. You think? Yeah, for me, for sure. So I guess certainly based on yeah. this. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that. I, I think that's such an accomplishment to do hot lady and hot man yeah. in the same in the same runway <laughs> in the same outfit. Yeah. I thought this was really good. I, I thought it was it very lot. sophisticated. Yeah. It was very Madonna. It was very 90s. Uh, the lingerie. I really I really liked it. I uh, and I thought it was very polished, very put together and as they they have been saying as is this weird issue, this weird albatross, it's not crystal method. Yeah. And she looks like a um she looks like a Dick Tracy villain, mm -hmm. which is my favorite part about it. Mm -hmm. So there was no bottom. Uh, yep. of the week, which I kind of figured. I knew we were going to eat at least once, if not twice, although because Cornbread went home, and so that leaves a hole in the production yeah. schedule. Uh, and I thought there could be another one because of the uh, the golden ticket. Well, yeah, there... But that's built yeah. in, so yeah. I think that we'll see. But the tops were Lady Camden and Diabetti, yep. which that worked out for her. I, I, I mean, I'm I'm... Happy for her, but and I, I like legitimately think that she is. I well, I, I legitimately hope that she's going to be like fine going forward because she got a critique and she was in the top. So I feel like, feel like she's quiet in some of the demons. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was the second, the second. It was Blondie. Mm -hmm. It was one way or another. Yep. I was like, Lady Camden, a hundred percent, and she did the mustache, and I yep. was like. So good. And the weird chicken. Yeah. She kept doing this chicken walk thing. I don't know. I loved it so much. So all in all, a rather eventful episode yep. when you really lay it out like that. So did you have anything else you wanted to say? I don't think so. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you glad you asked, Kristen. <laughs> Look at these production qualities. When we were talking about the fart jokes and stuff, yeah. I was going to be like, there were two fart jokes in this entire episode that worked for me. Both of which were from Ross Matthews mm. when Ross was like, that was quite the work of fart. Mm. And then when Rue said, cut the cheese. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, and then also uh, somebody get Lady Camden in a traveling production of Rocky Horror. Ooh, yeah. That's what I was really, sure. really getting from I see this it. lip sync. I see it for sure. So. All right. Well, that was episode seven. And hopefully you had a good time and hopefully you'll see us. Back next week when we do this again after the next episode. I, I keep going real purred happily at the end. I don't know why. <laughs> the story of this episode is that we're done now. <laughs> so, all right. Bye. Bye.